Thank you very much, Matt. Um, right, on to our final speaker now. And uh, Dylan describes himself, these are his words, as a middle-aged, middle-class bloke from Middle England. He currently runs a blog about his ongoing, slow journey around the UK in an 18-foot boat called The Slow. Um, and uh, I thought that this would be a really nice, gentle journey for us to end the evening with. So Dylan says that he has two simple messages for you. So please welcome Dylan. Righto, no apologies from me for the bit of paper. Writing stuff down and reading it out loud is what I do for a living. My great age plus too many split-sucking years working as a cowboy in my early 20s means that my memory is not as it could be. Reading this out will really, really help with the... Timing! <laughs> yes, chasing cows while you're stoned is really amazing. Let's get the YouTube tube hits out of the way. I'm a freelance, so money is of great interest to me. I've got 25, 28 million hits on YouTube at a dollar per thousand, that's $28,000. And who are these people? I bet you didn't expect to bump into a pie chart on a night like tonight. 95% of the men and 60% of them are over 55. The same demographic for online consumers are pictures of naked women. But these old blokes are watching another old bloke sailing what the Yanks call a four knot shit box around a small island with a stupidly crinkly 20,000 mile long coastline. I point its ugly little bow up every creek and river I come across and sail up it, filming the bends, the birds, mangling some history, but most of all I film and blog about the boats I encounter, creating endless hours of boat porn. <laughs> My personal indulgence is now shared with thousands of old blokes on the web and in print. The Observer, New Yorker, National Geographic, not one of the stuck-up bastards by my words, but practical boat owner and small craft advisor do. In some ways, it really is money for old rope. <laughs> Blokes pay me £10 a year to download the 300 films in HD, scrutinising every intimate pixel without the interruption of YouTube adverts. I burn DVDs so digitally illiterate, bandwidth-challenged old sailors can have it dispatched through the post in plain brown jiffy bags. <laughs> Two simple messages for you. First, shoot more video. Travel is movement and sound. The precipice inches from the minibus wheels. The bustle of a street market. The surf as it crams into a narrow harbour entrance. A still captures a moment. A video captures the experience. Life is too short for a JPEG that'll never escape from the confines of your bloody smartphone screen. <laughs> Second, it's not about the miles, it's about the adventure. Ten hours in an aluminium tube breathing in the recycled exudations of 300 farting pensioners, squalling babies and smelly backpackers is a crap way to bookend a life-changing experience and an utter waste of valuable carbon credits. When I spoke here last year, my shitbox journey had got me as far as Wells in North Norfolk. After that, to Thornton, Sand Harbour, where thousands of overwintering waders gather. Brancaster, where second home owning twazzocks, quaff pins, talk about waitros, and outnumber normal people five to one. Then to Kings Lynn, with the most beautiful vegetable stalls found anywhere in the world. Crazy people, though. Insane heavy metal music scene, fueled no doubt by probably the finest Fenland greenhouse grown weed anywhere in Britain. Back down to the mighty wash, Britain's massive inland sea, where the tide retreats seven miles to reveal thousands of acres of sand and micro estuaries. A whole new geography, unveiled every 12 hours. Days spent watching Britain's largest North Sea seal colony go about the business of sex. Infinitely caring, doe-eyed mothers gently cajole their pups to venture into deeper channels to school them in the subtle art of murdering mullet. At night, you lie in your berth listening to the bull seals fighting for territory and sexual favours. When it comes to acoustic displays of testosterone, North Sea seal bulls are more than a match for the pathetic, melancholic mewlings of manky Serengeti lions. With the eBay bikes on the bell, we took the slug up through Wisbeach with its elegant curved Regency terraces deep into the fens for Pete to Peterborough, a truly lovely medieval city 
but with the shitty suburbs this side of Milton Keynes. The Neen, by the way, is an incredibly clean river. You can sail under woodland canopies while beneath the boat you can gaze down into light, speckled, crystal clear subaquatic gardens where shoals of silvery fish dart and die. Then we sailed on to a place called Fotheringay, which ticks every constitutional box in our tortured history. It's where the dastardly Protestant nymphomaniac virgin bitch Elizabeth I had her own sexually, saintly, devoutly Catholic, yet endlessly scheming cousin decapitated. Then to Saltfleet, a tiny marsh snip of a place behind Skegness, where old men have been keeping boats since Roman times. Up the coast to the mighty Humber, where milk chocolate coloured tides run at the speed of a cantering horse, past Spurn Head, Hull, York and Brig, all visited by boat. And now she's overwintering up a mud creek where sailors' wives offer me pink coloured cakes from Tupperware boxes and call me pet. <laughs> it's been a most excellent adventure packed year, and the distance from Wells next to the sea to the Humber Bridge is as the seagull flits. 40 miles, that's all! To anyone saying they cannot afford a luxurious 2,000 boat like the slug, this is my other yacht. English duck punt. Any Ikea frequenting utterly ham-fisted Egypt can build one in 20 hours using nothing more than a saw, some glue and some self-driving screws. Total cost is £100. It sails in four inches of water and paddles like a witch. I use it to explore rivers and waterways beyond the reach of the mighty shitbox. I post these punt adventures on YouTube, get emails asking for the plans, so I bung them on the website for Freemans, and there are now at least 50 punts being used by paunchy old blokes. In combination with a lilo, a pop-up tent, and a willingness to gorilla camp along the bank, I've had some wonderful adventures. Occasionally, wrinkled rustics tell me to get off my land. But being shouted out by an old bloke never did anybody any harm. <laughs> it can only be a matter of time before some old codger drowns himself in one of my punts. I hope he goes down laughing because travelling by boat is such great fun. You, my fellow adventurers, live on an island surrounded by water and threaded by rivers and canals. A planet-busting backpack experience somewhere hot and sweaty will cost you £200 a day. An island adventure, crap little car, shit boat, eBay bikes, gorilla camping will cost you £10 a day and have one sixth of the carbon footprint. You only go once around this hamster wheel of life. You live on a wonderfully entertaining and utterly bizarre island. Listen to this old bloke. However you do it, get out there and have an adventure. <laughs>